this morning, Elder Nikki will be delivering the word of the Lord. So let's welcome Elder Nikki up. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, yeah, I want to continue what I shared last time. <laughs> um, the Lord leads me to, uh, to do a lot of healing this season within myself and also with a lot of uh, uh, members in this church, mainly the uh, leader on the Chinese side. And uh, yeah, I, I've been um, touched by their story and by the work that God is doing in their lives right now. So I want to share a little bit. So, um, the scripture originally is black, but can you guys read it? Okay, Jeremiah. Okay, let's read it. The Lord has appeared. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Okay, this is the words that God speak to Israel, his people, and so they also apply to us. Okay, so I want to emphasize an everlasting love. Everlasting, exactly how long will it last? Everlasting. How long will it, it last? Forever. In what condition? In what condition? In what condition? Uncondition. In all cases. Can you apply that to you, yourself this morning? Okay, you are the target. I am the target. of his unconditional and never fail everlasting love. So I think all Christian, I believe everyone in this room, we are all Christian, most of us. So we know this word, we heard about it, but does it apply to you? Does it touch you anymore? Okay, or do you apply that to your current situation? Okay, sometimes as adults, we, we, we get very good at carrying and bury the old things, not really resolve them, and then carry the baggage along with us. Okay, so we'll share about this a little bit later. But he said that, therefore, God said, with loving kindness, loving kindness. So in this season, we're going to, I'm hoping we can discover more loving kindness deeds by the Lord, because he's trying to draw us closer to him. Okay, so... Remember last time we say, Shem says what? Shem said that to us. Because I'm flawed, because you are flawed, okay? So I'm not acceptable. You are not acceptable to me or to certain people or to God, to leader, whoever. That's what the Shem constantly telling us. Shame, you are not good enough. You have problem. You have so many, uh, there are so many evidence to prove that you are no good. Okay? So you are not acceptable either by yourself or by your parents, by your boss, by your kids. As you remember the other day, her parents told me she went into the house and she has few sons, I would say just few sons, not just one. Everybody complain about her, like, mommy didn't do this to me, mommy didn't do that to me. She said, given time, somehow she developed, she accepts the fact that she is no good. Okay, she has four sons, okay. So imagine, but she, she cannot satisfy all of them. Eventually, subtly, she accepts that I'm not a good mother. And then one thing leads to, to another, she completely like crash and then has physical difficulties, okay? And then just in last month, God start, start like telling her, you already did your very, very best. That's very, very good to me. Leave them to me. Leave them the opportunity 
to cry out to God because the sons, they were, they were raised up in a Christian family. Okay? So sometimes we need to stop and listen to God. He might have totally different comments about ourselves. Okay? So that's what Shane said. But Grace said what? Anybody remember? I love this. Though I am flawed, though you are flawed, but what? I am cherished. You are cherished. I think God cherishes us, but we probably couldn't feel it. But I would encourage, we allow him to cherish us even more and allow him to help us to understand. And also, we'll cherish each other. Even though I, I have flaws, you have flaws, but I still cherish you. And we still cherish each other. This is like the salvation. It's like a healing. It will open up our emotion, okay, and it will resolve many deep problems within us. So, um, so grace, we defined grace last time. Can we read it again? Grace, grace is, is the, the active, tangible, tangible love, love of God revealed, revealed to, to and, and through us. us. It empowers us to live holy, overcoming lives, and to fulfill the great commandments and the great commission. Amen. So grace is an active, tangible love of God to empower us to do many, many things. So grace is supposed, well, grace is meant to be experienced. Grace is meant to be experienced every day. I don't know when is the last time you cry out to God, say, God, I don't know what to do. The other day, actually, yesterday, actually, th th something happened. And I find myself start talking to God. I say, I, I say, Father, I cannot love that person. I hit the wall. I cannot do it. I think we, we have that problem often. But have we learned to turn to God and say, God, I don't have it. Can you share with me? Can you empower me? Can you empower me? And then um, I think Thursday or Friday, something happened and really gave me a, I sort of, start getting to panic. Okay, that, that things actually trouble me for a long time. But in the past, I'm strong, okay? I, I was strong, so I handled it myself. But the fact is I suppress my feeling, I suppress my fear. I do something else, I pretend, I, I just try to ignore it. I run around it and then busy with something else. But this time, I stop and I talk to my father, say, Father, Please do not allow that to hunt me down anymore. This is what I say. You experience the empowerment if you allow him to teach you. <clears throat> this is a, <clears throat> a relationship. Do we have that kind of relationship? <clears throat> I'm so sorry. <clears throat> I'm not here to, to condemn anybody because I just start doing this, okay? But I'm inviting you to start turn around and say, Father, would you empower me to whatever? Can you do that? Father, would you empower me to not to do something or to do something or say something? So I still remember that, um, I think it's Friday, when I turn to God and say, Father, please do not allow that to hunt me down anymore. I actually cry over it. I get very sad. I even depressed over it. But that moment, that night, I stop and I talk to Father. Father, please, I need help. I just talk to him like a few sentences. Just turn my heart. Receive the grace. He didn't say anything um, dramatic to me, actually. But because I'm aware that he wants to help me. Do you have some conditions, some things, some people in your life right now? You need God to show up? You can pray about it, of course. But sometimes even a shorter uh, version is like you turn around and say, Father, empower me. They will work. So that, moment, that night, I experienced salvation. Because that is, I really have, um, it's really, really hard for me, okay, for, for many, many um, months. And I still don't know how to resolve it, okay? 
But that moment I, re I experienced salvation because I realized what's the grace for. It's to empower me. Anytime you need any kind of help, any kind of rescue, that's the time you encounter God's grace. And he wants to make it available to us at all times. Can you start thinking about something that you need grace for? Your work, your relationship, your parents, your children, your spouse, okay, your physical condition, or even simply your mood. You oftentimes feel sad. You oftentimes you feel depressed. You can still cry out to God like that. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so remember, grace. This is grace. Okay. And then another thing I want to mention is mercy. What's mercy? I think those words, we, we know about it, and we read about it, and we, we even we pray. When we pray, we, we use that word. But what, what exactly what's the mercy? is and what's the relationship between me and mercy god's mercy i want to awaken everybody here okay mercy is what is a love, love that responds that to, to human, human need, need in an unexpected, unexpected or unmerited, unmerited way, way. As, as its, its core mercy, mercy is, is forgiveness. forgiveness the, the bible, bible speaks of, of god's, god's love for sinners, for sinners. That, that is, is for, for all, all of, us. of us. So whenever we talk about mercy, when we read that God has mercy on me, on somebody, on certain situation, or the person that you pray about, or a certain nation, or anything, you know that it's a love to respond, okay, to human being in a very unexpected way or unmerited way. Okay, so the core of the mercy is what? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. So every time you come to God, maybe you do something wrong and you know that your condition is not really, um, you need to fix it somehow, or your relationship experienced some kind of problem, your thought life, your, your daily life, it's, you need to repent. That's the time you know you can come to receive his mercy because the core of the mercy is what? Forgiveness, okay? And then another thing, compassion. Those are the common words that we read often, okay? Remember you read Bible and say, the Lord has compassion toward what and what, right? So compassion, what's compassion? Is a form, form of, of love. love is aroused, aroused within with us when we, we see someone suffers or is vulnerable. It's Latin, Latin origin. origin. Compati means, means suffer, suffer with. with. Compassion, Compassion means someone, someone else's heartbreak becomes your heartbreak. heartbreak. True Compassion changes the way we live and act. So next time we, when you read Bible and you read something, the Lord has compassion for certain people and in, or in any condition, you know that person's pain or need or heartbreak become God, and God has to do something. So compassion, compassion always will follow by act. Okay, so you cannot say that I have compassion toward certain people and I do nothing. This is not a biblical version of compassion. So when you read God has compassion, you know God feel your pain, and then God want to do something. Okay, so remember this dynamic and uh, re remember this definition because those are the very very common words okay do not read the bible and just feel nothing because those words when god picked those words in the bible he carries a lot of emotion he feels your pain he wants to do something he wants to cover you he wants to visit you to give you some love some help beyond what you deserve what i deserve okay so those, this is the definition. Compassion means suffer with. Okay, mercy basic means you are forgiven. Okay? 
all right. So then, in Bible, okay, I searched the uh, uh, New King James Version. You can do this yourself on, on different version, okay? In the Bible, there are 276 mercies mentioned, okay? And then 146 times mentioned grace. Grace means empower. God wants to empower you. Mercy is mean, mercy means God will say, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. Okay? And then 50 times, compassion. God feel, God feel your pain. God feel my, my, my agonies. And he wants to do something. And he did. That's why it's recorded in the Bible. Okay? So there are many, many, those words are very common. So if you read Bible, now you probably have a better understanding. Mercy is forgiven. Grace, empowerment, and compassion is what? I suffer with you. I feel, I feel your pain. Okay? So if you read this and then you understand his emotion, the meaning behind those words a little bit more, sometimes you can, oftentimes we just quickly read a few verses or quickly read one Bible. Or maybe we read one chapter, I mean, or one, one chapter. Maybe you, you didn't, you, you do not read Bible on a daily basis. Or sometimes you just quickly go through that. So you, you, you fail to understand the rich meaning behind those words. And, and you fail to understand the, the author, okay, the God behind the Bible. Okay, so remember, okay, there are so many, so many, so many times God used those words to express his feeling. Okay. And then, oops, it's too white. Can, can you, can you uh, change the color? And there is endures forever. Who have read those words? His something, something endures forever. Remember that? Have you read that in the Bible? Have you read it? Endures forever. What's forever? What's forever? Forever, sort of like everlasting, right? Forever, forever, forever. So if you do a search, do I encourage you to do a word search. Not just read the words. Try to know the author. Try to know, know him. Okay, so what's endures forever? Mercy. Mercy. So if it's in New King James, 40 times. Mercy endures forever. God said, I'll forgive you, I'll forgive you, I'll forgive you, forgive you, I'll forgive you, forgive you, forgive you. Forever, ever, ever. Every time you come to me, I forgive you, forgive you, forgive you. Okay, and the other one, if you, you look at the English, English verse, NES or ESV? ESV, I'm sorry. Yeah, English standard version. It translated, the same word, but it translated into steadfast love. Steadfast. What's steadfast? Imagine hippopotamus. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> big lion. Uh, no, not lions, not strong enough. Uh, elephant. A whale. God's love is like a whale, blue whale. <laughs> okay. Or like a hippopotamus. Okay. So heavy. Can you move it? Can you, can you actually just move and push it around? Can you do that? No way. No way. That's steadfast me. Try to imagine. Use your words. Use your imagination to, to um, interpret it that way. God's telling you, don't even try to persuade me not to love you, not to have mercy on you. Never try. Okay, give up. No way you can, su you can succeed in doing that. My love is not movable. Okay, steadfast. Right? Am I, am I explaining that right? Steadfast. Will not move. Will not go up and down. Will not shake. Will not have second doubt. Okay, so when you read Bible, you, you got find some time to really get the overall ideas then your heart will become tender. And you say, wow, mercy is this meaning. And this will endure forever. Okay? I, I trust we will still condemn ourselves. Okay? It's built in. Okay? But 
once you know this better, God's grace get to visit us easier, right? Because now you remember something positive about him, something truth in your life, then you more easier for you to open up yourself to receive his help. Okay, so remember, his mercy endures forever, or steadfast love endures forever. Okay? Now I want to invite you to put yourself into this story. Those are very simple Bible story, something that Jesus did. Okay, but I want you, I invite everybody, you become the main character. Okay, the leading character in this in this uh, story. Let's read it together, okay? The, the scribes, scribes and, and the Pharisees, Pharisees brought, brought a, a woman, woman caught, caught in adultery and, and said to him, him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery. The law Moses commanded us to stone such women. What then do you say? Jesus said to her, I do not condemn you. Either go from now on, sin no more. Okay, I do not want you just me preaching or sharing. Imagine yourself, you are in this story. Maybe you are one of the audience, or you are the scribes, you are one of the Pharisees, or you are the, the woman, okay? Or, well, you're probably not guy, okay. <laughs> So imagine yourself, imagine yourself. So how do you feel right now? Can, can some, some of you share? Like if you are, you are the, uh, the woman or you are the scribes or you are the, uh, the audience. Who can tell me what type of feeling, what type of, um, um, things going on in that moment. Shame, okay, publicly, shame and caught in the middle of it. I cannot imagine that. And maybe you can think about what kind of clothes she was wearing at that time. I don't know the answer, but you can think about it so you understand the, the, the deeper meaning of this story, okay? You are actually doing something you know you are supposed to. It's not like modern day, this type of thing people accept, right? It's wrong, but it's become so everybody accepts it. So you still do that. And what would be the reason that you do that? Okay, all right, and imagine if you were her, what would be the uh, emotion going through right now in your heart? Hmm? Kill me. Okay, will you be afraid? In addition to shame, will you be afraid? I think she probably, probably she will know, right? Today should be her last day, right? And then imagine the people around, around her, most of them would be men or women. Men, at that time, men. Okay, it's not, it's not like today, men. Are they friendly or not? Will they treat her nicely and say, would you follow me? No mercy, right? That type of thing. And their intention is very, very clear, right? And how about if you are the Pharisees and scribes? Did you, did you think you're doing the right thing? Yes, probably, most likely. They're just very, very smart. They want to do the right thing at the same time, set up a trap for Jesus, right? Okay. So everybody has their feeling, has their cause, has their intention, their plan, and their expectation. They expect these girls to be to be or to, to receive something that she deserved, right? And then did you find Jesus respond rather strange? If you look at his answer, okay, you need to pay attention to this because that's what God will do to you and me. 
Okay, look at his answer. He say, um, uh, yeah, Jesus said to the woman, I do not condemn you either, right? Go from now on, sin no more. So did Jesus know the, the law of the Moses? Do you think that Jesus is conservative? <laughs> like, not, she doesn't want, uh, he doesn't want, he, he, he does not agree with the, this type of behavior relationship, right? But what he cares the most, that's my question for you. When you and I are seen, or even cut in the middle, even by ourselves, by our parents, or by boss, or whatever, my friends, but what's on his mind? What's on his heart? What he cares the most when you and I sing or fail. So, huh? Yeah, come back to him, right? Does he, does Jesus want to say, sit down? Let me tell you exactly how many rules that you have been broken so far, or how many Bible, Bible commands that you failed to do. Is it interesting doing that? But does he know that? Of course he knows, right? But does he interest in doing that? Is, is do we accusing us or naming our list, uh, naming our failure is his priority? Think about that because, you know, especially Chinese, okay, whether you're born in, um, overseas or born in here, Chinese very good at condemning ourselves, condemning others, and especially if you become like a Christian, then you have, they say you have two set of rules to condemn. Before you become a believer, you have only Chinese or American standard. Now Christian, you have two standards, your rules, okay, your behavior code become like double. You have more more reason to accuse yourself or others. But God never changed. He think about your future. He think about what's best for you. And he wants you to go to the positive direction. Even though there are some things he wants to heal you, deal with you, you need to repent, of course. But his heart is toward your future, your relationship, whether you will live a very positive, productive life. Okay, so think about that. That's, that's the God that we, 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 we say is our Lord. And the Lord doesn't do those things to us like we did to ourselves. So whenever you have those condemning thoughts about yourself or even to others, think twice. I'm not saying you're wrong, okay? Nah, not, I'm not saying you're wrong. Just try to align with him more. Okay, that will make him extremely happy. And that will actually help you to live better in the truth. The truth is God say, I condemn you no more. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm not interested. Okay? All right. Okay, this is the end. What happened? All right. The next one. Can we re read this? Soon, Soon afterward, afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nan. As he drew near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came up and touched the beer, <laughs> briar, and the bearers uh, stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Okay, amen. So, again, I invite you to go inside, go into this, this story, and imagine you are one of the, um, the person, the passenger. I mean, to just walk by this whole event, or you are the friends of the widow, the relatives of the widows, or you are the follower of the Jesus. So you ran into, that you imagine it's a gate, so there are many people. Okay, and, and these two groups of people, one is led by, by Jesus, the other is the, the widows, her friends. 
imagine you are in that scene, okay, and you are being part of it. So what's going on right now? What, what is happening right now? What? A funeral procession? Okay. And apparently the, the woman, the widow is, is crying, right? That's why Jesus said, do not weep. Why else? And there's a dead young man, right? Is it, a, describe to me, is it like a happy scenario, hopeful scenario, like what it is? Very sad, right? Can I say it's hopeless, right, and helpless, right? Do you feel hopeless or helpless sometimes? Do you? I think God wants to use this to also tell us something about himself. This is a widow, okay? Um, you know, at that time, women, is, they, their social status is very, very low, very, 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 very low. And they, they, they live very, very short. I think in Jesus' time when he was born, I did this search a few years ago. I think women lives around 40 years old, the most, in that period of time. Okay? So a woman, a widow, and a son die. Okay? So from that point on, she has no one to, to depend on. Okay? That means she will have no income, even no place, no food, no nothing. Not to mention comfort or help. Okay? Imagine. Has anybody asked Jesus to do anything? Did anybody ask Jesus to do anything here? No. And Jesus is on his way to, I don't know, to to certain place, right? So nobody asked him. And then Jesus stopped. Right? So the, the, the entire thing started by Jesus himself. Did a woman ask him to say, would you please, Lord, raise my son from the death? No, there, there's no, no evidence you can, you can say that because at that time, I, I don't, to me, I don't even think the widow recognized Jesus. So the whole thing is done by Jesus himself, all of his compassion to the entire situation. What's compassion? Suffer with, remember? So Jesus noticed this, this, this group of people, and she realized what's going on. And then she take action. She take action to resolve, to help. This is compassion. This is compassion. Okay. Every time when I, when I read about this story, my heart melts. So that means when you are in some hopeless, helpless crisis, you know God wants to visit you. Right? You know God wants to take the initiative to visit you. Okay? Never fall into the trap that God don't care. He doesn't care about me. This can prove. Actually, I would say God sometimes very nosy. Okay? He wants to talk to you on this. He wants to instruct you. That's why in, like, in Proverbs, he said, lean your ears to me cry out because wisdom is crying out here and there. Wisdom means him. Okay? So he really, really wants to get involved with us. But are we aware of it and then turn our heart and say, God, I need your grace to empower me. I need your compassion to rescue me. Okay? Okay? And definitely I need a mercy. So once you get to know those stories, you think deeper. You put yourself into the Bible that you're reading, okay? Your relationship and your understanding about that person, this guy, will get deeper and deeper and more closer to the truth, okay? 
So without, without being asked, Jesus just conducted a miracle. Right? Right? This is the God that we put our faith on. Okay? He's trustworthy. Sometimes he wants to act, he want to wait for us to, to pray, to request, because he wants to build a faith in the relationship. But sometimes he also wants to surprise us. Are you ready to receive his surprise? Do you expect that he will surprise you? Do you expect that he will come visit you to reduce your pain, to give you strength so you can do better? So this is God. I want you to, to think about this, okay? So this is God who takes the initiative to do a miracle, to turn a dead people around become alive and give this poor widow hope, right? Okay, the next one. Let's read it together. Jesus, Jesus was, was going, going through, through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. Okay, so again, go back to that date, that scenarios, and imagine you are part of the whole thing. Okay, you think Jesus is driving a Toyota around those cities, villages? Think about it, you need to understand what happened at that time. Jesus riding a donkey? Maybe. Maybe, I don't know. Okay. And what did Jesus wear at that time? What's the, the, the normal code clothing? Hmm? Rope? Sandal? Right? And imagine the road condition. Is it like highway? Paved way? Yes? Paved? No? Maybe. Okay. But I think city maybe. Village probably definitely not a paved pay road, right? Okay. Rock? Okay. In Israel, rock. They have so many rocks, believe me. And then sand. Okay? Okay. And the weather. Imagine the weather. Uh, you don't need to imagine. You know the weather there. Is it suing? Is it, is, it, is it mild weather, temperature? Hot. Dry or like Hawaii type of <laughs> weather or wind? Humid. Okay. Remember, that's desert seas desert area, so it could be extremely hot and very, very cold, very windy sometimes, all of a sudden, become very, very hot and then rain down, right? Could be a lot of things. And then he said it very clear, he heals every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. So let me, let me, um, who, who want to try this? I need, uh, I need Five, six, six men. Can I, can I have six men? Very simple. Okay, come forward, come forward. Six men. Okay, six men. Do you have men? Winston. <laughs> if, well, I know, I know. You're growing up to, to be kind of man, so <laughs> close enough. <laughs> Bryson, come on, come on. Okay. okay. No, no, I six, six, six. Okay. So, uh, so maybe Winston in the middle. Okay, Winston in the middle. You 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 play the Jesus. Okay, you play Jesus. Oh, <laughs> Can we have one more? One more. Matthew. Matt. 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 Okay. Here, it probably didn't say clearly, but in other verses similar to this, it described that people follow him closely 
push him, okay? And going up and down, up and down, okay? So let's do the pushing and the surrounding. Yeah, and then walk around. Walk around. You walk around, people following you. No, not, not really pushing. No one will push. But, but no, I mean, just, just squeeze. Oh, squeeze. Oh, squeeze when I say sure. We know what that is. Get very, very close to Winston. <laughs> Get very, very close to him. And some people want to touch him. Some people want to touch him because th there might be healing, anointing, right? That's what the Bible says. Touch him. You guys are too, too polite. Touch him. You want to get something from him. Touch him. Okay. Okay. Winston. I'll imagine like everybody like very close to him. And then whatever. Or, or maybe his personal space. Yeah, yeah, no personal space. Okay, okay, oh, 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 one more minute. And imagine all those five brothers, <laughs> they walk through the desert with sandal on their foot, right? And then going around, no shower, right? Most of the time, no shower. Can you imagine taking shower in desert place on a daily basis? Okay, so Jesus being surrounded by five very smelly persons, <laughs> right? Am I correct? I, is it being fair? Right. Plus, they have disease, <laughs> right? They have disease, and they are poor. People follow Jesus poor, most of them. Poor, have disease, smell bad, okay, do not have good manner, things like that. I believe this is a pretty close version to, to what exactly happened here. Okay, thank you so much. You are all very handsome. <laughs> thank you. So you need to put yourself into, into that scenario. That's what actually happened. Okay, that's why when Jesus sees him, those people, they need healing. They need, so th they rather travel a long, long time. So th remember the the um, the five thousand people miracle or the three thousand people miracle? They follow him. They they run out of food. They, they get they, they they were sick. They they want they seeking for the um, healing. Jesus was surrounded. You think that he's surrounded by prince princess? No, he's surrounded by that type of persons all day long in hot weather in cold. Sometimes rain. They don't get to shower. Okay, I'm not sure if they brush their teeth. You have to think. I'm not in, in, in Otherwise, when you read those things in modern day, you think, oh, that's not too bad. Okay? But if you really, really put yourself into the truth, meaning the story, exactly what happened in, at that time, then you appreciate the whole thing even more. Okay. Actually, what I just play out, I mean, accent to play out is something that God tell me because one time I complained to God I said God I do not like people come clo too close to me <laughs> okay there are certain people I do not like them to, to come too close to me okay it's, it's many years ago and then God pointed these verses to me he said imagine how Jesus was feeling at that time probably as a human being it's not comfortable but there are a lot of compassion the feeling compassion mercy he loves them, he cares about them, he wants to heal, heal them, but he also wants them to know his father, right? So that, this is how I get the download. I say, oh God, I need to get into exactly what happened at that time. Okay, so this here say that, they obviously they were distressed and dispirited. So with the people, if you say, this people is distressed dis and dispirited, most of the time, they probably will not be too pleasant to be around, right? But Jesus' reaction is he has compassion. He considered it as his sheep. Why do I want to bring this up to you? Because sometimes you are not too pleasant to be around, okay? Sometimes you, 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 you smell Okay, whether physically or you're in your spirit, your, your words, behavior, or your, your, even your expression, people probably would not like to hang out with you. But Jesus would do the different thing. 
this is the Jesus we need to get to know more. Okay? All right. So, a few questions, actually. I don't know why all these questions suddenly <laughs> come out, all of them. Okay, so, um, so I want to spend some time, everyone, and then um, we, we process those questions before the Lord, okay? I invite you to hear him yourself. We have several, um, we, we quote several um, um, verses from the Bible. Whether you are the woman is committing adultery or you are the distressed persons or you, you have something dead in your life. You feel so hopeless, helpless, anything. Okay, so maybe we just go, go to the, the first question. You ask God, what about me? Is it something? What about me or how about me? Father, do you want to visit me today, this morning? Okay, so maybe we can bow down our head and ask the Lord. And then you can start giving the thing that troubling you or you know is wearing you down right now to him. So, Father, we want to come to you and ask you to awaken our heart and emotion. Father, in our head, we know we are the recipient of your grace, your mercy, your compassion, your, your everlasting love. But in our emotion, oftentimes, we do not feel it. Father, we ask you to send the Holy Spirit this morning to help us awaken our emotion to heal our wounds so we, have, we could experience a closer relationship and a fresh encounter with you. So some of you, if you God already reminds you of someone, something here or in the past or in the future that is troubling you or threatening you, make you very, very uncomfortable, uneasy, afraid, depressed, or saddened. Would you, would you give that to God? And then you can start talking to him, say, Father, I would like to receive grace in this area. Would you come to empower me? And would you have compassion over me and do something in my life to help me out? It's okay that you don't have any solution right now, but at least we turn to him and say, Father, visit me your grace, your mercy, your compassion right now. Talk to him. Father, will you come to help me? 
Will you come to rescue me? Let me give you some pictures, or he might help you to remember something, someone, or he might say a few words to you. Just focus on him. If you are willing, would you like open up your arm, like ready to be hugged by him? If you open up yourself to him. The other day, I have a healing session with a brother. Um, it's about, I think it's about 45 or 50 years old. He, he told me his life story. Okay. He shared how he was doing very, very well when, she, when he was in elementary school, always the top one, number one. And then when he went into a private junior high school, all of a sudden, because the classmates, all of them are very, very outstanding. All of a sudden, he need to try so hard to catch up with everybody. Then his ranking, his score keep going down and down and down and down. And to make things even worse, this class is, is designated to, to like commit and to be like very to do the painting. So everybody is required to be not only good at academic, also very good at painting. But he doesn't like painting, he doesn't have the gift. But in order for him to survive, his mom suggests her, I will find somebody to paint for you so you can fake it, so you can keep your, your score. He did not like the idea, but he has no choice. Okay, so, so eventually he agreed. But then from junior high the first year, the second year, and the third year, he struggled with shame, with uh, like cannot catch up with uh, academic, cannot catch up. And then because he has so much shame, he cannot keep a good relationship with the classmate. When he has trouble with homework, he will ask the classmate. And the classmate will actually literally tell him, why do I want to tell you? If I help you, that means you will do better. So he just sent, just sent him away. So he experienced very cru cruel treatment as well. So then, um, you know, in Taiwan, um, after you graduate from um, the junior high, and then you need to take a very serious, uh, it's like an, 
nation-wise um, um, exam to decide which school that you can go to. Then because he was so stressful, so he's so much pressure, then he had diarrhea when, when he needed to take the class, only like two days um, test. Because he cares so much. He say, later on he said, there's an inner vow in him saying, I will come back to you guys to prove that I am good. Until right now. Until right now, until a few days ago. There's an inner vow in him. Just wait. I'll come back to prove to you guys that I'm good. But the sad thing is that this pattern kept going on. Of course, he didn't make it to the good high school. Then he chose to stay in the same school to go into the, um, the, um, the higher classes, the, um, the um, 9 to 12th grade. Then same thing, because he compete with the same group of people. Imagine that. So he kept failing. And then one thing into another. And then he completely flunked the, um, the, the college Entry, an entry test. And then even when he was very, very old, like 35, 40, 45, he's still determined to go to the, the Ivy, Ivy League school right now. But he already did, I, I would say, not so bad career-wise. But in his mind, he cannot let go. He cannot forgive himself. He cannot forgive those people. Like, um, give him so much pressure, mistreat him, okay? Until a few days ago, we have this session, okay? And then we, I would say we really, really help him to regain his dignity. Of course, it's not by human being. It just help him to experience God. Then after that, he starts smile, smiles a little bit more. And then he said, literally in his brain, he feel less pain. He constantly feel pain in his, in his brain because all the memory. Okay, another case also happened last week. A sister, she played piano very, very well. She told me she was the number one. You know, in, in Taiwan, you, you want to go to a college, you want to go to music school, music department, that you need to take two type of class and two type of tests. One is the academic one. You need to take the, like the Chinese, English, okay, things like that, a couple of them. And then you also need to do this um, skill test. You need to play the instrument or things like that to prove that you are good enough. She said that, um, the, the skill, she is the number one, ranked the number one in Taiwan. So that means she is very, very good. I was very shocked when, when she told me because ever since I knew her, I never see she play piano at all. Not even close, stand close to the piano. So I was very surprised she is that good. Okay, number one in Taiwan, playing piano. Then I asked her what happened same thing. She said she flunked in the, uh, I think the Chinese. She thinks very easy for her, so she didn't prepare. She spent most of her time preparing the piano, the recital. Also, they have some music theory, things like that. And then she failed. She only get um, 27 out of 100, the score. Okay, so she completely failed. You need to reach, uh, meet certain, certain score to be considered. And then from that point on, because, okay, her family, her mom and dad, they were not very rich. So they actually sacrificed a lot to, to prepare this, this girl, this daughter, to take very, very expensive, you know, piano level. If you talk by, like, the, the master, it's very, very expensive, okay? And then she needs to, like, take buses, um, and tax, uh, not, not taxi, buses, and take a long time for her to reach the, the master <laughs> the house, and then the, and the teacher would teach her. So basically, it's not easy for her to be this good, to be, to, to, um, to be built out this well. So that's why when she fails, she can no longer forgive him, herself. She, ever since that time, I think she only like 18, 
80 years old until right now she's close to 50. She does not want to touch piano. And then she say, I lose my dream. And I lose the opportunity. And okay, the, the thing that really, really pain her is that all the classmates, everybody else become extremely famous in that particular field, okay? And now that we have the social media, so you know how well other people are doing, right? That's even worse, right? So that's why she become numb. She feels nothing. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. She say, I lose the one that I love the most. I mean, this dream, my, my life, my opportunity, okay, everything. Then she doesn't care. So then she just randomly go to a col community college and then read something she doesn't really like and then just until, until like last week. Yeah, and she say, I don't care, I don't see any hope. What, what does that matter? Doesn't matter, okay. I try so hard and then something happened and then I lose the chance of my life. And it's proof, it's, it's, I've been proven that I'm a failure. Especially my mom and they already spent so much effort in their difficult situation. They pour so much money, effort, put their hope on me and I failed them. Badly, okay, so those type of thing, you and I also share, okay? And the brother, there's another brother. He was brought up in a family that he, he has, I don't know, many, many brothers and sisters. And then everybody, nobody want to listen to him. And the, the parents, especially the father, uh, has anger issue. So when they communicate, they usually in a very um, brutal way. They'll yell at each other. That, that, that's like the way they, they communicate. They yell at each other, they interrupt each, at each other. So until today, I, he's even older than me, okay? And I work with him. I find out no wonder he has anger issue. He get frustrated at all time because nobody listened to him when, when he was young. So he think that nobody want to listen to him right now. So he gets so frustrated easily. And then she's, he say, I'm smart. I want to serve the Lord, but how come nobody listen to me? Okay, and then he has anger issue. Then he, his anger will, will, <laughs> will, will just pour out to his family, his wife, his children. So, so even though he loves them, he really loves them, but they do not feel close to his heart. Because the words, you know, word has power, especially when uh, there's anger behind it. So those type of thing, there is a root in this season. God wants to deal with that so you and I will be free. Okay? So today is just a beginning, but I want to create an atmosphere and also an opportunity for you to encounter God. You ask God, what about me? I have this struggle. Maybe you also have this anger issue. Okay, or you have this depression issue. Or you feel very guilty. You cannot forgive yourself, even though you try. Or you keep having a relationship problem with others. Or you don't see any bright future ahead of you. Those things has a root, or maybe I should say root. Okay, and God wants to visit them. So what we can do is to understand his passion, his grace, his mercy, basically his willingness. And then God will start like help us to open our heart and clean those woods. Okay, so um, I want to encourage you in this season, after today's message, ask God, God come to tenderize my heart. I do not want to carry my 500 pounds trash anymore okay you keep running you try to do things but you have 500 pounds trash contributed by by yourself by your parents your teacher your pastors i don't know your spouse your kids whatever okay it's time this is the season god want to visit us this is time we taste his mercy his compassion his grace okay he want to come to help us so remember those questions. 
bring one back today, okay? And then start dialogue with God. Will you come to help me? Will you come to empower me? Okay. All right. Okay. So, hmm. Originally, it should show up this way. Not sh show up totally in one shot. Okay. All right. So, I want to leave you guys with this verses because this is written in the Bible, and this is for you and me to use on an everlasting manner, on a moment-to-moment -moment manner, case by case. We can use it. Can we read this together? But this, this I, I call to mind, mind, and therefore I have hope. hope. The, the steadfast, steadfast love of the Lord, Lord never, never ceases. ceases. His, His mercies never come to an end. end. They, they are, are new every, every morning. morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Okay. Lamentation. It's written in a very difficult situation, very difficult time for the Israel. But at that time, the author, the, the writer say that, this I call to mind. You remember. You remember something. I call to mind. Because you call something into your mind, then I have hope. Okay? And then that's what I... So that's why I give you the, the verses this morning. You, you think about the, the, the miracle or the rescue or the good thing that God has done to you or even the testimony that I shared to you. Okay, you call that into your mind. Then hope come up. Hope is like something. Hope will help you to open up the door. Like Jesus standing outside right now, I want to open up. So you need to call something. You remember something. Okay, and then you have hope. So this is the following is what he called to his mind. He said, I remember the steadfast love. It never ceases. He remembered it. Okay, and he said that the mercy will never come to an end. Can you say that to yourself? I remember God's steadfast love never cease. Okay, and his mercies will never come to an end on me. And they are, it's even better. They are new every day. It's like God give you the refill every morning before 5 o'clock. Okay. Or even earlier, renew. It's like a refill. Every day you and I have a refill of mercy. Okay? Your mercy, your, your steadfast love, because he's very, very faithful. All right? And then, then you say that. Again, then he remembers, say, guys, my portion, that's why I have hope. Do you have hope? Sometimes I do not have hope. There's a period of of my life, I don't have much hope. It's because I do not call things. I do not remember. I forgot to remember those attributes of God. Okay? Then, the, then following, he said, God is good to those who wait for him, seek him, and wh those who wait quiet before him. Then they will experience the salvation. Can we read this verses one more time? You, you read it to yourself, to your soul, to your spirit. Okay, you, you command yourself. Today, I want to call this into my spirit. Today, I want to call this fact. You know, this will last even when you pass away because this is the words of God. So they are more trustworthy than your feeling, your thinking, your impression, whatever. It's way reliable than you. And me. Okay? So let's, shall we stand up? Stand up and let's read this, those, this, I think, six verses together. Then we'll, then we will worship God. Okay, let's read it together loud. But, but this, this I call to mind, mind and, and therefore I have hope. hope. The, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His, His mercies never come, come to an end. end. They, they are, are new every morning. morning. 
Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Okay, so we'll sing this song. Um, I, I personally do not know this song. <laughs> so let's learn these songs together, but this is a very, very good song. Um, the lyrics is so powerful. So let's use this song to come before the Lord. And then if you have some unfinished business with God, why don't you continue work with him? Say you feel shame, you feel hopelessness, you something really, really trouble you, things like that. Just give it to God. Okay, let's sing that together. Allow this worship sound to minister to you.
could play this song one more time, but just lower the volume. But you can, I, you, yeah, I encourage you to maybe just worship one more time, or we can group one or two, two or three people together, and we bless each other. We say to God, God, in this season, I'm willing to open up my heart, my spirit, my emotion. To receive your grace, to receive your help, I want to turn my heart. Receive my part of healing. I don't want any one of you here to wait until you're fifty something, or even fifty, um, sixty something, and then you meet somebody like me and set you free. I'd rather you do it today. I'd rather I did that. Long, long time ago. Okay, today, God wants to help us. So you can choose to be yourself, or you find your friends. You pray for Him and with Him, so you two can be accountable to each other. Okay.